This is Stories of the Four Courts podcast and today I want to talk about the people who worked as court keepers in the Four Courts. So you should see here on the right an image of the Four Courts. It's from the late 19th century and the Four Courts is the main centre of justice in Ireland and it has been from, since 1796 so if I go to the next slide, you'll see an image of the Four Courts as it was shortly after its construction. You can see uh, that there's a central area with the dome above, and that in fact is, uh, consists of a hall with four courts off it. And these four courts are the four courts which give the four courts its name. So then uh, at the uh, ends of that, you have two wings and they're taken up by records offices and courts offices and so forth. So that's the four courts as it was. And this is a plan of the layout. So again, you can see the round hall and you can see the two wings. And the four courts I mentioned, which are off the round hall, are known as the courts of Chancery, King's Bench, uh, Common Pleas and Exchequer. And you see it's quite a large uh, structure and obviously it requires a lot of maintenance and cleaning. And there was in fact a housekeeping staff to deal with the offices in the western and eastern wings. But the actual courts themselves were under the jurisdiction, each of them, of a designated court keeper. And uh, the court keeper was responsible for looking after these courts. So you can see here just a picture of one of the courts, the Court of the King's Bench, it's now Court 1 in the Four Courts, as it was in the 19th century. And you can see various features, you can see a huge amount of the public are there, and that was typical of that era. People used to come to the courts for entertainment, they used to come to the courts to keep warm because there were always big fires in the courts. And of course, in those days, all civil and criminal trials had juries. So you can see a jury box there. And you have a number of judges sitting on the bench, and that would be typical of, um, of that era as well. So the court keeper had quite a lot of work cleaning out the jury box and the public benches and the judges bench at the end of the day. And also uh, had quite a lot of work cleaning the judges chambers, which were located in the vicinity of the courts and were also under its jurisdiction. So there was a very close relationship between the court keeper of a particular court and the judges who were assigned to that court. Because once you were assigned as a judge to a particular court, you generally stayed there for most of your judicial office. Uh, so uh, one uh, court keeper wrote into the newspaper when she was uh, removed from her position in the mid 19th century. And um, it's a little bit blurry, but this is the advertisement that she placed in the newspaper and it complains about her removal from her position. And the interesting thing about it is she says that this would never have occurred under the previous Lord Chief Justice, uh, Lord Norbury. She was removed as court keeper of the Common Pleas and uh, Lord Norbury had been previously the Lord Chief Justice there. And she says that in the past, when uh, her rooms beneath the Court of Common Pleas were flooded, uh, Lord Norbury made his chamber above available to her and her family and also gave them some financial assistance. So I suppose what is interesting about this is it illustrates how the court keepers actually lived on the premises. So here's Lord Norbury, he looks quite scary but he seems to have been very nice to his court keeper at any rate and you can see his court there. And that's the ground floor, but what this doesn't show is the basement below. And it seems from this, and there's also other evidence, that the court keepers and their families actually lived in apartments below the courts to which they were assigned. So often the court keepers were widows and they might have their children living with them there as well. And whole families effectively lived in the, the basement area of the four courts, at least four families. So we don't think of the four courts as a place of children and we don't think of it as a home, but that's what it was to these court keepers and their families throughout the 19th and early 20th century. And often the children in question, you know, they grew, grew up beside one another, so they tended to be very close and they were part of a unique group. But a tragedy occurred uh, in the early days of the four courts between two of these children. The and um, son of the uh, court keeper of the Co Court of Common Pleas and the son of the court keeper of the Court of Exchequer. 
and they had previously been great friends, but they fell out and they went up to Bully's Acre, which is beside the Royal Hospital Kilmain, and you can see it there. They went up there to have a fist fight, and the fist fight lasted 28 rounds, and one of the boys was killed. So that was awfully sad. It was sad because they were such a small community as well, that there was a killing within them. Um, and I suppose the other thing is, as I mentioned, the court keepers, jobs tended to pass down through families. So if your father worked in the four courts, you had a good chance of getting a job there yourself as well. So this applied not just to the four courts itself, but also to the Sessions Court in Green Street, which was around the corner from the four courts. And um, there was a case there in uh, the 19th century, um, in the 1860s, when the court keeper of Green Street Courthouse was charged with having sold off court documents. And um, old paper was quite valuable in those days. It was used for industrial purposes. And he had taken the old records from Green Street Courthouse and he had sold them off. And he was prosecuted for it. And at his trial, it was mentioned that his father had been court keeper of Green, Green Street before him and had been a very good court keeper. So this just illustrates how the hereditary nature of the, 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 the employment in the four courts, how it tended to be passed down from family to family. And you find that with other jobs in the four courts as well, that they're associated, you know, uh, the job of court crier or tip staff tends to be associated with particular families as well, historically. So he wasn't the only court keeper to, um, uh, to misbehave himself. There was another case in the four courts itself in the Nisi Prius courts in 1867, when John Cobb, court keeper, was found to have taken a number of chairs and a hearth rug. And he said that he'd taken them because he was short of money and he had just pawned them and he was going to get them back when he got his wages. But they were rare. Generally speaking, the court keepers in the four courts were very well respected and even loved. So we find another court keeper of Green Street, uh, a lady called Eliza Vance. Uh, we find her being presented with a silver teapot in, 19, in 1847 in recognition of her uh, zeal uh, and uh, loyalty in keeping the court clean over the years. So she was clearly uh, very, very well regarded, Miss Vance. And we also find um, in 1917, uh, we find another court keeper by the name of uh, John Brown uh, being um, mentioned in the newspaper. He died at the age of 97. He was also the court keeper of Green Street Courthouse. And, uh, sorry, his name was actually David Brown. He was also the court keeper of Green Street Courthouse. And he, despite being 97, he had discharged his duties until a few weeks of his demise. And he was described as an accomplished naturalist and a skillful woodworker. So clearly he was very well known and very highly regarded in Dublin, or he wouldn't have got this right up. So as the 19th century moved on, there were certain innovations which uh, sometimes made the court keepers' lives easier and sometimes caused them additional difficulty. And one of these was the introduction of gas into the courts. So gas lighting was introduced into the courts in the late 19th century and it was uh, problematic, uh, to say the least. Um, Chief Barn Palace, who was the judge in the Court of Exchequer, had a very sensitive nose and he was always complaining to the court keeper about the smell of gas in the court. And um, on one occasion, I think he was so annoyed with it that he just told the court keeper to turn off the gas at the mains. And the court keeper said, well, what about the apartments below? Because obviously this court keeper, as with the others, lived below the court. And Chief Barn Palace said, get candles. So, uh, you know, uh, there were a lot of stresses for the court keepers in terms of judges who were concerned with the condition of the court and so forth. You know, it, was a, it could be a stressful job. And... The um, thing that changed in relation to the courts, in fact, was uh, the destruction of the four courts in 1922. That changed the court keeper system. There was a civil war in Ireland in 1922. The courts were almost entirely destroyed and um, the, uh, they were rebuilt and reopened in the 1930s, but the court keeper system was not reinstated. And in 1930, we find a number of former court keepers um, looking for compensation for the loss of their jobs. So clearly they decided at that stage they were going to make the court keepers um, redundant. 
So one unusual feature, I think, of the court keeping system was the fact that the court keepers tended to be women. Uh, there were a few male court keepers, but a lot, an awful lot of them were women. And that was most unusual because you didn't find women in the four courts at all in those days. They didn't even go to watch the trials as a general rule. You might find the odd female litigant or maybe female family members when people were called to the bar, but not otherwise. So the journalists, also male, who reported what was going on in the courts were fascinated by these female court keepers. And sometimes they even wrote about them in the newspapers. So there was uh, one piece published in the female, in the Freeman's Journal about a very beautiful court keeper of the Court of Chancery. And um, she was described as having the dignity of a she judge because you know, they couldn't contemplate the idea of female judges in those days. So they were uh, using the term she judge. And I think if you were to go to court for today, which is where the Court of Chancery used to be, that reporter would get a surprise, I think, to see female judges sitting there. There was also another uh, court keeper who got a write-up in the paper, and that was uh, um, uh, in the context of uh, the uh, statue which had been put up to, to Chief Justice Whiteside. You can see the statue there, it's now in, in, in Christchurch. And, um, uh, Chief Justice Whiteside, uh, after his death, this statue um, was, was commissioned to commemoration and there was to be an unveiling ceremony uh, at the beginning of which term 1880 and all the judges were to come in their robes in procession and the statue was to be formally unveiled. So they did come in their robes, but the statue had already been unveiled because Judge Whiteside's former court keeper had had her own unveiling session earlier that morning with the other lady court keepers in which she took the calico shroud off the statue. So she got in ahead of the judges in the formal unveiling. So uh, the four courts are still there today. You can see it uh, in much the same form, but uh, there are no court keepers. We do have a very good maintenance staff uh, who look after the courts and their job has obviously been increased with COVID. So we should be very grateful for their hard work. And uh, it's good just to remember people who might not necessarily be written up, but who played a very important practical role in keeping the courts running um, over the years. And if you want to see a list of the previous court keepers, if you go to Google Books, you'll find Dublin Almanacs. And you can find them by just keying in court keeper four courts into Google Books. And you will see all these almanacs that list the people who worked in the various courts. So this is just an extract from one of them, the Court of Common Pleas. And you can see that it lists the court keeper as Mrs. Eliza Curry. So it probably would be possible if you were to go through these almanacs to compile a complete list of court keepers. It might be interesting uh, for their descendants. It would be great maybe to get some of the descendants back to visit the courts. And what would also be interesting would be to see if any of the court keepers apartments below the round hall survive because obviously everything above ground more or less was destroyed in 1922 but I wonder did the destruction actually affect the below ground area the, the basement of the four courts is a bit of a mystery it would be nice uh, to find that out so thanks very much and I hope to maybe explore some other matters relating to the four courts also uh, later thank you